And ah, where are you? I'm up. Do you know the Northwest at all? A little bit. Uh, it's north of Seattle, near the San Juans. It's an island called oh. Whid called called Whidbey. So you know, even though I can see Seattle from here, you'd think the coverage would be better, but where I am is not that great. So it's okay. Well, I'm actually on a landline. Okay. Oh, good. Me and the last reptiles. On no, Earth. are you kidding? No. I love land. I, not only do I love landlines, I love corded landlines. Cord to the wall, and then cord yeah. to, cord to the handset. You can talk yeah. on it forever. Sound quality is great. Batteries never die because there are none. I love it. Right. Yeah. Right. You can do it in, in a storm. You know. It, yep. It's great. But yeah. One of the few left. <laughs> um, Mark, I'm totally new to all of this. So forgive really stupid questions. That's okay? right. And it's not so much the technical aspect of things. Mm -hmm. it, it's more about uh, the mindset. Sure. Okay. So I want to know, where did this start for you? Where did you discover it? And what influenced you the most? Sure. It started for me during the summer of 2014 when I was looking for something new in the conspiracy world. I mean, I, I absorbed a lot of media at that point. I'm a big movie watcher, watched 99% of the movies by myself in the theater. I didn't want to wait for somebody, wait for a date or a friend to go with. Watched a lot of television and watched a lot of documentaries. And if you watch a lot of documentaries, eventually you're going to slip into the conspiracy world here and there. Yeah. I mean, you don't... JFK from Oliver Stone in the 90s aside, there really have not been a lot of in fact, mainstream movies that touched on any of it. So I looked at just about every conspiracy you could think of, uh, and we won't necessarily rattle them off. But once you go through them and go through them again and go through them again, eventually things start getting, it's like yeah, they, they start getting a little old hat. So everybody knows about the flat earth in the conspiracy world. Everybody's heard of it. In fact, everybody outside of the, the conspiracy world's heard, heard of Flat Earth, but nobody looks at it because it's ridiculous. We're all told since we're young children, it is the most ridiculous thing ever. And three years ago, I absolutely would have agreed with you. Then I stumbled across just this weird, obscure little video that was made by a guy in Germany that was talking about the flight paths in the Southern Hemisphere and how they didn't make sense on a globe. He goes, if you're trying to fly from anywhere in South America to Africa or Australia, anywhere from south to south, you know, somewhere down there, he goes, the, the flight routes are all screwed up. They don't make any sense like they do in the north. The north are extremely efficient and the south, they're just all over the place. They take these weird routes, go north most of the time. There's almost no nonstops to speak of. I mean, there's thousands of flights down there, and yet most of the capital cities, you cannot get nonstop flights between. And he goes, you know, it's weird. He goes, when you look at the connections, the connecting flights in the Southern Hemisphere, they only make sense if the Earth is flat. But that's impossible, right? And I, got, and I you know, that seemed like the end of, of that little video. And I'm going, okay, this is, you know, I'll bite. Why not? Yeah, I, I, was, I was bored enough. Let, let's see, see where this thing goes. And I thought I could knock this thing out in a weekend. It's like, okay, uh, you know, I, I should be able to disprove the flat earth. Because I, I just took it as kind of a challenge. I, I had done tech support for yeah. a long time. And uh, like, problem solving is, is one of the things I can do. May not be the fastest problem solver in the world, but I am very clever. And so I looked at it and I looked at it. And I started, the more I dug, the more questions kept popping up to where you know i couldn't i basically could not prove the globe entirely to where nine months later i found myself uh, february 2015 i found myself in the middle of the night having that weird jerry Maguire moment where i said okay how do i know exactly it's a globe how did i know it was a globe when did i first know and so then i started making a series of videos called flat earth clues which was kind of a thought experiment that i put out to the internet hive mind and, and said okay prove me wrong Tell me how I screwed up here because I don't think it's a globe anymore. I think that we're living in a giant planetarium, a giant Truman show, uh, a soundstage, a terrarium, an amusement park ride, whatever you want to call it, a Petri dish, a science experiment. There's people have given it all sorts of labels. And I thought for sure that somebody was going to shoot that thing down and not, 
uh, you know, and, and say, well, you made a mistake here. You forgot, you know, some academic was going to say you made a math math error here, and, and that's the problem. And you, you can shut down your YouTube channel. And that, But the exact opposite thing happened, where all of a sudden, not only did people start calling me like you, but I had subject matter experts, people from branches of the armed forces and pilots and uh, people that, that's specialized in transportation and shipping engineers all these people with the exception of nasa you know nasa employees they all said the same thing it's like you know what this this idea is not completely crazy it of course it has to be crazy but it isn't that crazy and the, you know just kind of started snowballing and snowballing and then more people started making videos and more people started doing other things and i mean i was i didn't create flat earth nobody did but i kind of connected the dots and created the dummies version for it to where it resonated Consider yourself the leader in this move no 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 no, no. Or i mean one of them? well one of the spokespeople maybe where i mean i've got i've done more interviews than other people but that's because i made myself available that was the, that was the big difference I man like i put my phone number for better or for worse put my phone number and my email address and my real name out on the internet that's what shocked me <laughs> that's what's up yeah. It did. I didn't think for a second that that people would actually call because again, I thought. But but I want to make myself available so that the I I had the best chance of getting the answers that I wanted. And so I, yeah I, yeah I created the dummies guide. You know that's really what the flat Earth clues is. The flat the clues are the big introduction, and I've kind of become the tour guide of this whole flat Earth thing. Now there are a lot of people in the movement now that specialize in great things. Uh, but I'm I'm the guy that walks you around the the university, you know, the orientation guy or the the, the factory, and say over here we're working on weather balloons, and here, you know, sea level experiments, and here, you know, and, and you know, it's it's fun. But uh, as far as leaders go, yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take credit for that. Hey, how many people do you think uh, do believe that the Earth is flat? Now millions. Have any idea? Oh yeah, there's millions of people. There's no question. Okay. It's it's massive at this point. Get a member. Even if it's only statistics, let's throw statistics. Even if it's only one percent of the U.S. population, even if it's just one in a hundred, that's three million people right there. And yeah. we've got the the stats that we have tracking on YouTube are massive at this point. It is grown way larger than I thought it was going to grow in the, in the amount of time, and most and but the thing is most of the people that are out there that are, that are into flat earth they're still in the closet and i don't want to make too many ref in the closet references yeah. but you know where i'm going here whereas you know you're in a family of people and you've heard them say bad things you know maybe you brought it up it's like what do you think of this flat earth idea and people oh flat earthers should be shot you know or flat earth should be run over with cars or never allowed to reproduce and all those fun things so i, I but i mean let's put it this way the the flat earth conference that's coming up in the fall in north carolina you know first one in this country ever in the history of the united states 200 plus years it was sold the vip tickets sold out in a week and general admissions sold out not long after it when's that coming up that's going to be november 9th and 10th in raleigh north carolina and there's a london conference yeah this year and then there's a london conference going to happen in the spring after that and in the meantime there's been all sorts of local meetups that have popped up all over the country which i in fact i just just before you called i just finished a promo for kansas city which they had never done one when you when you guys get together mm -hmm. do you disagree on anything Are you uh the minor of, of believers minor things when we get together because i've done several meetups myself i've done one in seattle and a couple in canada the the ones that I've gone to know the the enthusiasm people are so relieved to be in a room full of people that actually are on the same page for most of it right. that it, it doesn't turn in any yeah they may dispute a few things it's like okay is there a dome is there not a dome is it an infinite plane is there more lands how many are there different versions of this I mean, they may discuss it but it never gets heated uh, in fact, the the main community, I would dare say that the main community still doesn't. We don't argue a lot about the uh, the main points. We're we're just we just know that ev that other people have different views. It's kind of like the uh, the what the Scottish Highlands and you know, all the clans 
and you know we a lot of people carry different banners, but we're all still all on the same side of the field. So I'm not right. not right. too. But not, just about technicalities. In that yeah, I, most people will follow the same same thing that I do, which is I don't lose any sleep over it. So if other people that you know have more subscribers and and do more things, if, you, if it's like okay, well, you know, if they don't believe in the dome, hey, fine. We're you know when we find out at the end, even if there is no dome. I'm not going to you know, shed a single tear about it. So you're open to new ideas and new. Oh yeah. About it. Oh yeah. The 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 great thing about the flat Earth concept is that it is the ultimate open-minded experiment. Meaning you can, and it's really interesting because I've known hardcore conspiracy guys that when you bring up flat Earth to them, I mean they could literally believe in reptilians and and every secret society. You bring up flat Earth to them, they will try to laugh you out of the room. And so when you, if you can actually get past the flat Earth, you're not going to condemn anything. You're not going to condemn other flat Earth theories. You're not going to condemn any conspiracy theories. It's like, oh, uh, really? That's the ghost of Elvis having Bigfoot's baby. Well, yeah. it sounds horrible, but I'm still not going to make fun of you for it. Because how can I? How can I judge anybody when it comes to other conspiracies now? Could anything ever convince you that the Earth is round? Short of seeing it for yourself. Uh, it'd be a tall order. Really tall order. Even if you had 4K cameras running nonstop from a rocket pad to orbit and the orbit got far enough to where you could actually see the earth spinning from uh, spinning on its axis and the weather morphing simultaneously and the the camera had the ability to spin around and also look at the moon and have the image ability that you could see the star constellations so you could match you could time date stamp the the star constellations and make sure the 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 data matched up maybe but it would take well, it would take some doing but we haven't even gotten we haven't gotten anything remotely close to that no, but what if you could see it with your own eyes? Oh, not... somebody could put me up in a rocket? Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure, absolutely. Okay. But it's never going to happen. Because the... video, you know, video can always be suspect. Well, you know, it, ca it can and it can't. The, the video that we've broken down over the last couple of years has been pretty easy to, to decipher digitally. So I we, we have yet to find a piece of NASA video which we can't tear apart. So, I mean, if you could show us a piece of video that, uh, that, that seems, you know, that, that when you put it through, I don't know, a battery of people and they all run it through different filters and they all come up with the same conclusion that it looks legit, hey, fine, but we have yet to find that. So, I mean, that's the next best thing. But yeah, of course, if somebody put me up in a rocket, but it, it's never going to happen. They're never going to put me up in a rocket, even though Elon Musk says he's going to slingshot two people around the, the moon next year. Uh huh. Yeah, that's going to happen. Do you post the videos to convince other people or just put the information out there just for the record? Just for the record. I'm not I'm not here to convince you. Uh, I'm not here to really convince anybody, which is why I put at the end of my clues, do your own research and ask questions. That yeah. that was the big thing I said. I was like, look, don't believe me. It's I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. If you think you can prove it wrong, hey great, fantastic. But it, what I've seen is is that people once they start down this road once you put the seed in their heads it's kind of like a marble in a paint can they can't get it out because yeah. because you can't there's there's too many eventually what the, here, I'll, I'll give you the quick breakdown what'll happen is you put the grab the average person in the street and you say oh yeah the world the world's flat look into it and they will eventually try to use space one of the space programs as a crutch and it's tricky because there's supposed to be a lot of stuff there. You should have an, everyone assumes there's this overwhelming mountain of evidence on the space side, and there isn't. Uh, in fact, again, the, the, the lack of pictures from 1972 until two years ago, 2015. Or the, the question that I like to throw at people is, is that the easy one, the, the one, if you try to do it in a short amount of time, the easy brain teaser that I throw at people is this. How do you know you're on a globe? Eventually, they'll say NASA if you're United States or Europe, European or Jap Japanese or whatever. I'll say, okay, the first picture was taken in 1972 by Apollo 17, the Americans. How did you know before that? Because it's not like we woke up in 1972 and just figured out the Earth was a globe. 
how did you know before 1972? And even if you go back, find the inception right. of NASA was 1958. If you want to go back there far, it doesn't really matter. How did you know before NASA that it was a globe? And because it's not, again, we have supposedly known for 20 generations before NASA. So, and eventually, and I'm waiting for them to say the words. And they say, well, science told us this. And I go, yeah, that's right. Science told you. They, because they, science didn't know. Science made a lot of calculations. And they were 99.9% .9 sure of these calculations. But until you have a vehicle that can go up high enough to see what the world really looks like, what do you know? I mean, what really, what do you know for sure? I don't care what geometry and trig and calculus you throw at this thing. Until you get up there, you don't know for sure. And hit, that's where the conundrum comes in. It's like, okay, let's say they got up there and it wasn't. You know, and then you're talking Twilight Zone episode. It's like they get up there and it's not. The problem is that the institution that, that, that science was built on, which a lot of it was built on the globe. Let's face it, all the major physical sciences are start with the globe model. That institution was running for 20 generations. You're asking a group to tear down part of its own foundations. They're not going to do it. There's just too much time has passed. Uh, I'll, I'll use a smaller example for you. It'd be like if the Catholic Church found out that the Virgin Mary's name was actually Susan. Well, we're, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think they're going to do? Do you think they're going to rewrite everything and amend everything to, you know, including all the prayers to end songs to, to account is for... Any of, is any of this, because it's so anti-science in a way, is any of this driven by religion? Hmm. Uh, Religion's really latched onto it, but but no, it's there is a spiritual aspect to it, which is why it's resonated, which is this, and it's it's kind of a side effect of the realization, which is okay if we are in some sort of dome structure or whatever you want to call it, if we, if this place is not a globe but flat and part of you know a, a, an organized system, then it was created. And by default, if it was created, that means there's a creator. Now, is the creator an advanced civilization? Is it the hand of God? That I'll leave that up to somebody else. But, okay. it, but yeah, it does lend itself to spirituality. And because of that, because eight out of every ten people belong to one of the big religions, eh, you know, they're, they're going to they're gonna see what they want to see. And the religion does play a factor in it, no question. Okay. Are the other planets flat? <sighs> Let me answer it this way. When you go to a planetarium and you see Jupiter up on the ceiling, it looks like a sphere, right? Well, when you walk out of that planetarium, who's to say you just didn't walk into a much, much bigger one? And I try, and I know that kind of dates me. You know, there's not a lot of people to go to planetariums anymore. But no, they don't. It doesn't have to be flat. It can be a sphere, but it's very, very small and very, very close. Uh, same, same thing with the sun and the moon. I mean, the, the, the planets, yeah, they look like spheres, but they're just points of light. They're just part of the display system. It might as well be your 4K television. Well, I mean, it's way better than 4K, but it might as well be your 4K television displaying a sphere image. Okay, so, so everything is flat. Well, again, it doesn't have to be flat. It can be. It can be a three-dimensional image. It can be a hologram. But yeah, it, it's it's going to be. In fact, I don't even say necessarily it's flat. I just say it's part of a display system. But yeah, if you want to say it's flat, that's fine. Okay. So once you latch onto this thought, mm -hmm. and it goes contrary to everything you've ever been taught, right. everything you've ever seen, all of that. Mm -hmm. Does this give you peace and confidence to see it this way, or does it make you angry or unsettled, or, you know, does it give you, how does it make you feel? Are you angry you've been lied to all your life? Well, it's, it's, it, it, where it, all, it all those, all those things, actually, it's part of a process and everybody has their own way of dealing with it. So for me, it was kind of a, journey back to spirituality because I was, you know, I was raised born again, Christian, you know, vacation Bible school and Sunday school and youth, Ouch. youth, <laughs> youth groups and all that stuff. But when I got to college, all of a sudden it's like, wait, there's a bigger world out there. And you know, I didn't, I didn't even know there was another political party. I thought Republicans ran everything. Yeah. And that that's the sort of place I grew up. And when 
uh, when I found out this, this drew me back to it. The whole, you know, Truman Show creator thing. Again, not going to put a name on God because again I'll leave that for somebody else but it, some people yeah they, they get they get a little claustrophobic at first because you're talking about wiping out an entire universe and condensing it down to a single structure a single building and but at the same time it's it's comforting because yeah yeah of course you've been lied to but you were lied to the the people the the governments and all the other conspiracies that were are tied to those governments they only helped hide this they didn't build it it's not like the u.s government built this place this was built by something that was far far greater than them all they did was keep the you know keep the the curtains up and keep this thing hidden for another 50 60 years that's that's all they accomplished so one of my next questions is is this intentional uh a contentional conspiracy or is this just from the government standpoint yes they're hiding it because men don't like to give up power plain and simple it's it's really as easy as that um the 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 the, the analogy i like to give recently is the truman show but if somebody other than truman let's say the whole town was fooled in the Truman Show, if you remember the 1998 movie. Let's say the mayor was the one in that sailboat that we made it out to the edge, right? Fancy car, fancy house, servants, maybe the whole nine yards, right? What's he gonna do? Is he, he's, he gonna walk up the stairs and walk out the first door he sees? Or is he gonna go back to town and make sure nobody else sails that far? You know what I mean? He's got a lot more to lose. Truman had nothing to lose. That's why the movie was, was written the way it was. Men in power, men with a lot to lose, they're going to hold on to this for as, as long as they can. That's that's the, the people that are inside here that are trying to keep this thing a, a secret. But when it comes to whoever built this, yeah, it was created to keep us acting naturally. The globe, there, the globe illusion was, was brilliant uh, from that regards. And you had to create it. You had to make sure there was no fence that the people could find. Because if they did, that's all they would care about. Remember, we're the only species on this world that would care about a boundary you know you put a buffalo on a thousand acre wildlife preserve they could care less about the fence they got everything they need you put the same you replace those buffalo with people people are just going to sit by the fence and ask questions about the fence from now that, until doomsday that's where my brain starts yeah. i always wondered where people get their ideas every religion in the world has their own theory about creation yeah and about afterlife right so i started to research them and see where their ideas come from mm -hmm. and this is kind of like that um in a way yeah you know it's it's a fundamental thought everybody creates their own reality sees things their own way mm -hmm. so that's what fascinates me about this i'm wondering why anybody would latch on to this theory Be and and what it does to your head where did it come from where is it going to take you to yeah. why would anybody embrace this theory that because it the reason why people are embraced why it's resonating as well as it is i've got a couple theories on it but the the first one is it's because it's the one thing it's the one idea we literally have been hammering into people's heads since they were children literally there there are no other conspiracies that we actually try to debunk to children the globe has been there forever uh meaning you know it was not only did we put it in your classroom since you were six years old and and keep it there basically in every classroom you ever sat in but we made it corporate logos we've made it into different icons for all sorts of fun things you know every, globes are everywhere but not only that but we've been doing this be, you know, be, for your parents and your parents' parents going back tw at least 20 generations. So it is, it is, it's like the ultimate mystery. People, it kind of resonates with weird childhood things, p things about that we think about, like how, how does water stick to a globe and, and how is Australia at the bottom of, you know, uh, underneath us and how do ships go over the horizon? Little things that we remember when we're young. But we never really, but we always just took it, we went with the peer pressure, which is, well, it's just this way, and that's how things work, and blah, 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 and it's like, okay, well, and just move on. 
and we don't really think anything of it. So when all of a sudden this thing is re reintroduced to you, it 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 seems the ripples seem to go all the way back to your early early school years, and it's it affects all of your memories simultaneously, and you you have to deal with it. I I've, I've told people it's like look love it or hate it it's one of the few things i've ever seen that you can't ignore and the comments and the the letters and the phone calls really uh, bear that out where people get i mean the the reaction to, i don't care what conspiracy or topic you know it's whatever hot button you can think of i don't know uh church versus state roe v wade uh uh gay rights black rights jewish rights take your pick right there's yeah. none of these things create a knee-jerk reaction like this does you bring up flat earth to people and they within you know 60 seconds they go from zero to furious some of them in a it just, yeah. just like that and it's because again it the ripples go all the way back through their entire head and to a vulnerable part in their life and they've got to resolve it and it can be frustrating do you think it's that inner struggle or they're just amazed that people would put this idea out there is it like trolls that just want to you know well they they try to justify it however they they can yeah some people yeah some people will, will go down that road and say this can't be real you're pulling my leg like when some of the celebrities came out recently this year and we're talking about it and they say no he's just trying to get a rise out of you he's just trying to to mess with you and anything, you know, or again, it really goes into the five stages of grief uh, when, when this thing, you know, the first stage is denial. It's like, can't be real. Can't be real. Second one, anger. It's like, how dare you? How dare you bring this up to me? You know, and uh, followed by bargaining, you know, where, where they're saying, okay, the moon mission was, was a piece of crap, but you can't tell me that, that space isn't there. Or, okay, the ISS is a piece of crap. You can't tell me that satellites aren't real. You know, th that whole thing. Depression, that that does, you know, it, it varies. Some people go into depression. Some people, uh, you know, find it, uh, you know, this big revelation, where ep an epiphany stage. It, I've seen both. And then finally, you know, acceptance. But I've I've seen all stages and, and can note, I've never seen two people do it the exact same way. It's really interesting to watch. As, as far as the uh, videos that are on YouTube and that sort of thing, mm -hmm. um, do you get positive feedback? Most of the time, or yes. Well, most oh, of the time oh, it's positive. Well, most of the time it's positive, but here's, here's what happens. So trolls are notorious yeah you know, the, the the whole reason trolls exist is because they can be be anonymous you know they can just throw rocks from the darkness so in right. the comment section of a youtube video you'll find i don't know it's 80 between 80 and 90 percent positive but you'll still get trolls that say awful awful things right and but when it comes to emails and phone calls that's 99 percent positive because nobody wants to see, trolls are also right. lazy right 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 so right. they're not going to spoof an email or create you know get a burner phone just to call me and leave a crappy message yeah uh, so how do you find time to do all these interviews and stuff this is what i do now this is all i do uh all it, do. this is this is my yeah this is full time uh once and i kind of had a feeling it was going to go that way once a producer called me from a pretty big outfit and it was still too early to do the project, but she said she her opening uh, one of her opening things was I hope you I hope you have your passport ready because you're gonna end up going places with this. And I go really, and she goes oh yeah. She goes it's way too polarizing. It's way too it generates too much enthusiasm both for and against to not go somewhere. And the way it's spreading, he goes you're it's gonna it's gonna turn. And sure enough, she was right. Now her project didn't pan out, but others did. I mean, shortly after her thing came and went, uh, there was a publisher out of London that called me and they said, yeah, we want to turn your your clues into a book. I go oh, okay, what do I have to do? They go send us your transcripts. We'll take care of the rest. And wow. I did. I did. I've never you know. And then, like the the interviews, I hadn't had I didn't have to solicit a single person. People were actually mad at me that I did coast to coast three months after I did the clues, <clears throat> and I actually was surprised too because when the producer called me and, and they said, "Okay, well, what? Give me your pitch," and I'm going, "What are you talking about?" They go, "Okay, well, you know, what's your book? I don't have a book." I go, "What's your, you know, what's your this?" And they just keep asking me the guy. I go, "I don't have I any don't of have this." A book. 
I didn't have, I don't a, have a book yet. <laughs> well, the, well, yeah, that. But I didn't even have a website yeah. at the time. And they uh -huh. and I said, oh, and they said, well, why are we talking to you? I go, you called me. Why are you talking to me? And she yeah. goes, well, we heard you were on another interview. It was a uh, Ground Zero. And they and I said, and then I gave my pitch, kind of like what I'm what I'm doing with you. And they said, okay, you know what? We'll we want you on uh, in like eight days. We we'll want you on. You're going to be coming out at two in the morning with George. Uh, here, sign this this disclosure agreement. Say like, okay. So, but the point was, it just kept snowballing from there. And so, so you've given up your job and everything to do this full time. Yeah. Yeah, this is what wow. I do, and I haven't regretted a single single moment of it. I've done. When, when did you stop working and stuff? Uh, I stopped working actually right after. It, well, that's just it. I was doing startup stuff, startup company stuff in Boulder, so I was in a great position. It's not like I was locked into a company for ten years and all of a sudden decided to give it up. Uh, it was it was during that time where Boulder was going through a transitional phase, and it's like I I wasn't locked down to anything, so I didn't have to. I it, it, the timing was perfect. I, I had no guilt at all when I when I did that, and but then I had to start you know monetizing my uh, YouTube channel, which I hadn't done for like the first fifteen months, and I didn't want to because I figured well why and I gave away millions of hits, which I I don't feel bad about, but that's part of the reason this thing spread is I made my videos Creative Commons license, and said you know if anyone wants to run with these, go ahead and put them on their channels. And in fact, the biggest. It's weird. The biggest flat earth videos with the biggest hits are on other people's channels, but they're my videos. <laughs> so, oh my God. so I was like, okay, fine. It's like, if that's the way it's supposed to go, then that's the way it's supposed to go. I have learned that for me, that life is a ride, like the Bill Hicks line. It's a well, ride. Then, and you are, then you are a leader in the movement. Well, I, I yeah. look, I mean, yeah, I did help a whole bunch of people. No, no question. I, but there are uh, some great. I am like for the conferences coming up in in the uh, the fall. I am just one of the speakers that are, that are there, and I'm glad that I get invited on stuff, and I'm glad that I'm getting the the word out. But I'm uh, uh, I, I still have a, a bit of a shy side to myself. Have you ever been this deeply involved in another conspiracy theory? No, no. Oh, good lord, no, 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 no. In fact, the YouTube channel I've got only has flat Earth on it, and I mean, I've looked into other conspiracies and I've spent some time on them, but not, I not. And again, that shows you the how the much this thing resonates. You can show people, people can watch, I don't know, a, a month worth of nine eleven videos and not do anything of it. I've seen people within a few days of watching flat Earth videos all of a sudden start up the brand new. Uh, YouTube channel and start creating their own stuff, their own content. That's that's they that because they want to be a part of it. They's like it's. You know, I don't want to call it. You know, try to equate it to like the '60s or something like that. But the the perfect example would be the music. We, we there are people actually writing songs. I there are playlists now. I'm I'm looking at through like 2015, 2016, 2017. There, there's like over 200 songs that I posted on my channel. I didn't write any of them. And how many how many happy 9/11 how many happy JFK songs are there? You know, folk songs and rock songs. There's none. I mean, this thing's got a life of its own. Well, now that you bring up this whole side of it, mm -hmm. are there any people out there promoting this theory that are doing it just for uh, ratings, the financial gain? That they're um, not sure. people are trying. Some people are trying, but they seem to stumble pretty quick. Because if you're not authentic about it, if you, I mean, one, you've got to come up with your own content if you're going to make money on it. I mean, yeah, you can, you could try to mirror other people's things and make a little money off of it. But I haven't seen anybody else just kind of create a book out of nowhere just to do it. You've got, you've kind of got to, it's tough. You can't just jump into it. The, the community won't embrace you if they sit, if they think you're just doing it for the money. Okay. They're, they'll they'll sniff it out pretty quick, but I have. But then again, I haven't seen too many people do that. It's. it's I think publishers and you know, media outlets, whatever, they will pick up anything that's sensational. Well, that's just so it, that's and it just it and it yeah. and it depending on how you get a hold of me, that's how what just happened in the last week. Finally, uh, we had been kind of smoldering under the surface and and touching a few things here and there, but then finally last Friday the Denver Post ran it front page. 
and which surprised me because I honestly thought they were going to kill the story. And then once that happened, the weekend, you know, got a chance to, for people to kind of soak it in. And with what was it? Today's Wednesday. Two days ago, all of a sudden, everybody started calling. Uh, oh. Uh, oh, yeah. It was, you know, people wanted to do out documentaries. HBO wanted to do it on their news thing. Uh, CNN's poking around. Uh, Al Jazeera Network. I mean, a wide range of three different groups of vice media uh all different sorts uh, all you know not tied to each other have all been now just in the last week if you had a certain demographic or if you even have any feel for this right what's the main portion of your followers uh it's still very much tied to the 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 conspiracy world demographic which is 75 percent male well Flat Earth is still at least 75% male. The conspiracy world is about like 85% male, but, but Flat Earth still skews a, a more female because it's a softer message. It's got kind of a happy, upbeat side to it. You know, it doesn't, it, I, there's really not a lot of darkness to it, in my opinion. But 75% male, as percentage white to black, I'm not really sure. Gay to straight, I'm not sure. Uh, oh, but it's age-wise. Oh, age-wise. Age um, well, that's just it. Even that's kind of been transforming. It would be in my. It started out, you know, late thirties, early forties, type type thing, and then it started moving backwards into early thirties and then late twenties. I mean, heck, I just posted a video where I literally watched a six-year-old girl make a flat Earth video that was shot by her nine-year-old brother. Uh, wow. which which is amazing it's like holy smokes and you know th th what got me onto this first of all my son mentioned it to me and i didn't think it was real yeah and that was about a month ago and then i saw a young man um <clears throat> on youtube and he said here i'm going to show you and he takes a very short airplane flight and he puts a level on the tray table with his phone and you know, he's trying to prove that they don't need to readjust for curvature. Right. <clears throat> and I, I saw this young man and I thought, why do you take this thought into your head? Why does this resonate with you as real? So that's what fascinates me here. And your answers here today have really, really helped a lot. Well, thanks. You, oh, by the um, way, if you want me to answer that question, because I know which, which video you're talking about, the guy that bought the, brought the spirit level on the plane. Uh, you want the, the the easy one, and I'll steal this from uh, many shows, and that is people love a mystery. They love unanswered questions, questions that they think they can solve, and that's really what Flat Earth is. Flat Earth from the surface seems like a simple child's puzzle toy, and and you look at it from the distance, and it looks like the easiest thing to solve in the world, but you see somebody with this puzzle toy playing with it, and they can't solve it, and it frustrates you. Because you're looking at it, and you're going, why is this guy can't say, is he, this guy's obviously an idiot. I, I can, you know, and then he, for whatever reason, he puts the toy down or you find another version of the toy and you pick it up. And the more you time you spend with it, the more mysterious it becomes. Oh, everybody you mentioned this to will say, well, then why not this? Well, why not that? Right. And, you know, well, how would this be then? So it, it really doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter if the Earth is round, if it's flat. It doesn't matter if, you know, the planets are this or that. Yeah. Because I'm not going to get to Venus. I'm not going to go to Mars. Oh, sure. So sure. it doesn't matter. Um, that's the way of looking at things. Now, hold on to your hat here. <laughs> All right. My son is an astrophysicist. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> is he the one that showed it to you? He's the first one that mentioned to me um, flat earth. And I said, you're kidding me, right? And he said, no, it's a real thing, Mom. <laughs> he said, people really believe this. Yeah. Now, my son and I um, have a lot of differences. I Have you ever heard of Reiki? Reiki. It's I... energy healing. Uh, I, oh, no, but Reiki that's okay. Reiki master. He doesn't believe in that for a second. Got it. Not for not for a second. Sure. He thinks it's embarrassingly foolish, that sort of thing. Yeah. So people can have very, very different viewpoints of things. Yeah. Um, 
so yeah, it 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 boggles my mind. And if you take a telescope on mm-hmm. Earth, yep, and you can look at planets, you'll see that they're round or whatever. But yeah. somebody's going to explain it a different way. Everybody's going to bend what they see to their own way of thinking to whatever resonates with them. So I'm wondering why this thought resonates with people. Yeah. Again, it's and it's when it comes down to it, a lot it, of physics is just what if. Yeah. And it's a lot of theory and it's a lot of interesting stuff to talk about and think about. But after that there's no practical application for the individual. There's no practical application for the individual on a flat earth either. True. I'm not going to fall off the edge. Yeah. You know. I'm never even going to see the edge, right? Yeah. So it's all just theory, and it's all just a a mental exercise. And for that, it's fun, and people can, everybody brings up their own point of view. So... But it should just, but but the the big reason, if you're, again, if you're looking for uh, alternative reasons why it's resonating, Mm -hmm. that, what, what you just said there, it shouldn't be that way, though. And that is, it shouldn't just be a thought experiment for the flat earthers. It the the globe model, the globalist model, should have yeah. shot it down in two seconds. You know, if you treat it like a uh, a boxing match, the 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 flat earthers should have been knocked out in the middle of the first round. And because there should be just this huge, overwhelming mountain of things on Wait, the globe. That's glo- just a matter of perspective, though. Well, from the is scientific it? side, they're going, that's done. And from your side, you're going, see, that's not done. Well, but you're looking at their science and going, that's done. It's all and, a matter of your perspective. And yet we cannot get a single academic. I mean, it is like like pulling teeth to try to get anybody with a master's degree or higher in any of the physical sciences to even address this because of the battery of questions we've got that they can't answer. Do you enjoy that sort of uh, conversation with them? Well, not... Is that, part, is that part of the appeal of being in this? No, 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 no. No, it's not. I, I, No, I hate arguing. I hate debates. I would have never been in a debate team in high school. But what I, what I understand is... The problem is the conditioning, when you have enough conditioning, there's nothing you can do to break out of it. So if you have a master's degree or higher in a physical science, there's nothing that will change your mind on this. Even, heck, even if mainstream, if CNN came out tomorrow and said that, oh yeah, by the way, every, it seems like polls are showing that now people think the earth is flat. Uh, until one of the scientists breaks ranks, and and comes with us. It doesn't matter how many subject matter experts I grab. Somebody in the phys- somebody in the academic community has to break ranks. Until that happens, they're not they're never ever going to believe it. So so if if this is real, if mm-hmm. the flat earth is real, right. and that globe is false, right. and it's in every classroom, right. and the given the current political educational environment, Mm-hmm. Do you think they should be teaching science in school? Boy, that's a tough one. I don't even know if I want to get involved with that because then, because if you're not teaching science in schools, who's going to teach it? You know, the you're not going to go back to the uh, the church teaching it. So, don't know. It's that's a that's a that's a tall order. All I can all I can say is look and get, don't get me wrong. I am not an anti science person. In fact, we've taught. Our group has created more uh, science enthusiasts because of the the factoids we're throwing. Remember, we we don't have to have to create our own numbers. All the stuff we're grabbing is straight up mainstream science. I've had to memorize all sorts of fun stuff that I didn't didn't even touch in high school or college. Yeah. And for this, so science. Hey, I'm, what I'm saying is is that science does has created some great things. Hey, light bulbs, air conditioning. Super great smartphones. Eh, we'll have to see about that. But there, what what happens is they go down roads and they never backpedal. Meaning they don't the the Neil deGrasse Tyson line. Science is right whether you believe in it or not. I'm going. All right, fine. The boiling temperature of water at sea level. I'll agree with you on that. But the core of the Earth. Oh, not a chance. 
you know, if it's four, again, it's 4,000 miles to the center of the earth, 1% of that is 40 miles, you've drilled down eight. You've drilled down eight miles out of 4,000, and yet you show us these wonderful cross-sections of the earth. And even science will say, you know, if you could dig deep enough in the internet, they'll say, oh yeah, it, we're just extrapolating, we're expanding. And I go, then why don't you put that in small print in every single textbook that you've ever put? Because when a nine-year-old sees a cross-section of the earth, and they see all those, you know, those, the, the orange and yellow and white bands that are, that are inside the earth, they, and then they see it again, you know, a couple of years later and a couple of years later, that's fact, utter fact to them. And they will fight to defend that fact. When you get to a certain point, that's just straight up conditioning, even though it is utter speculation. You have no idea what's down there. Not a clue. Do you have any idea how thick the earth is then if it's flat? That's just it. We don't either. Because okay. look, if, if, if the deepest hole ever drilled is eight miles, I mean, yeah, I could take a, take a crack and say that it's got to be a little deeper than eight miles, even though the drills and can't go further. But I know it's if, not. Fo go ahead. If you could drill all the way through, what happens? Don't know. Fall out the bottom. <laughs> well, then you're assuming that there's space. That again, that's part of the conditioning which people I, I love. They throw out there and they go, well, "Is there space?" You know, like let's say there was a dome. Let's say we're in a planetarium. Is there space outside? I go, "Well, sure, there could be space outside, but there doesn't have to be space outside." It, it, wow, I didn't know it went that far. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I mean, God. you're if you're if you're living if you're living in a snow globe, <clears throat> and and people say, "What's outside it?" I go. Beats me. I mean, for me, it'd have to be some sort of unlimited dimension. But so the stars and everything that we see are inside that dome. Oh yeah, yeah. You're literally. Oh, okay. Oh. See, I told you. Forgive the stupid question. Oh no, 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 no. It's okay. I said that up front. <laughs> no, no. It's okay. You know, I mean, every. You're literally. When I when I say the Truman Show, I mean literally the Truman Show. I'm gonna it, have to rewatch it because I forget. Oh no, it's okay. Lot of it. The, yeah. the the Truman Show, if you, again, if you took, well, Truman Show was just a Hollywood sound stage that was, I don't know, 20 miles wide. It was like a giant, giant sports stadium. And if you built that thing out, if, if you had a tech, the technological ability to build it out thousands of miles wide and, you know, just a couple thousand miles high, you don't even, in fact, you wouldn't even have to build it a thousand miles high, technically. Then how many people, and when I was doing the thought experiment, I was like, you know what? At that point, you don't need actors anymore. All you need is some negative reinforcements, some environmental uh, controls, and that's it. You could literally hold an entire civilization in there, and no one would know, especially after a few generations, which is why I quoted the, the great movie, which nobody watched, called um, uh, from M. Night Shyamalan, The Village, which was the, where, yeah. where they took you know a kids into a wildlife reserve, built a town, and told them they were living in the mid-1800s. And why right. would they think anything of us? We, we believe the world that is presented to us. That's, that goes back to Descartes, the philosopher, hmm. with the images in the cave. Oh, right. Um, if, if you're familiar yep. with that. Yep, example. yep. Yeah, and it's you believe what you're conditioned to believe. Right. Period. And uh, kids, yeah, kids don't believe in that I thought of. Kids don't believe in lies. Look, I mean, I have included a, a CNN clip uh, earlier this year where well, I'm watching Wolf Blitzer, if you know CNN, Wolf Blitzer, Candy Crowley, running a story, dead serious, of course, because, you know, they didn't want to give up, give up the game, where Santa Claus, during his rounds, is now going to be flanked by United States F-18 fighters. Radar images, the whole nine yards. She's broadcasting from the Pentagon. <laughs> you got oh, to, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's you know what true. I mean. The, 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 yeah. My point is, is like, look, we're a, you know, and some people, other countries were kind of getting mad at this because it's like, why does the U.S. get to dominate the whole Santa Claus market? You know, if it, you know, Santa Claus doesn't belong in the United States. It's like, it, there's so many layers well, the thought, to that. The thought process is amazing out there in the world. Yes. The way people think is absolutely amazing. I don't know how old you are. 49. Oh, 49, okay. Yep. The National Enquirer, you know, it could be Bigfoot's reptilian blonde baby that speaks French. Right. Okay. It has a market. Sure. People buy it. People want to believe that things are possible. Yep. They want to believe in this kind of stuff, whether it is or not. 
<laughs> so you can make up anything in the world and somebody will buy it. Somebody will believe it. Got it. Um, but it, it also, it, but it, it also won't, but it won't resonate. It won't resonate through all demographics unless it's got some hook to it. Meaning, you know, the, the old saying people's people are suckers for the truth. And this thing has a lot of, when you're trying to find, when you're trying to use so-called mainstream truth to shut this thing down, you can't find it or well, not enough of it. I have to, and I don't want to offend you in any way here, mm -hmm. but that's kind of how I look at people buying into religion. Well, sorry. They want to believe it. They want somebody else to do the thinking for them and feed them what is considered to be the truth or you know the actual word oh, people yeah. don't take the bible and interpret it well, many many do no, of okay? course of course but the fundamentalists who want to go by the word of the bible yeah i can't understand their thought process right they they yeah. kind of amaze me and scare me yeah. so i'm i'm really very interested in how people approach things yeah. How, which things they intend to embrace. For me, in my life, if I encounter something that resonates as true, that's it, it's true. Yeah. When it strikes me that way, I grab onto it. So, yeah. you know, this has been so enlightening. This oh, I'm glad great. I could help. And anything, any, any direction I can point you after this? Or do you want any other people to talk to?